Well, here it is. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary. I, I, I want to emphasize that. Your adversary. Your adversary. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. What are you going to do about that? Here's what you're supposed to do. Resist him. Firm in your faith. Now that's, that's the topic for the message, okay? Resisting the devil firm in faith. Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. I'm going to keep reading, just it's important. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To Him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 So it's my job in this message to inform you, actually to remind you, I'm not going to say anything you haven't heard before. That's really not the point of preaching, to come up with new and novel truths. I'm just going to remind you that when you became a Christian, you made a new friend and you made an enemy. When you became a Christian, Jesus became your friend, and the devil became your enemy. That's how it works. This is one of the results of your belief in the gospel. This is one of the implications of the gospel, and you having embraced it, is that you now have an adversary. You now have an enemy. And he's an extremely dangerous enemy, and he's, he's an enemy that you need to be aware of. It's, he's an enemy that you need to pay some attention to. He's an enemy that Peter says, you have to resist. You have to. Now I'm going to ask your permission, like Paul did to the Corinthians. Paul said to the Corinthians, I want you to put up with a little foolishness, but you drove me to it. Remember when he said that? I want to take a little poll here. This is how we decide truth in America. So we'll take a little poll. I'd like to, all of you to raise your hands who are, are afraid of me. If you're afraid of me, I'd, uh, I'd like for you to raise... Uh, I actually got a couple people. Judah's afraid of me. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> Not very many of you are, are afraid of me. Um, I was hoping that several of you might be afraid of me. Fear can be very useful. It really can, especially, especially when you're the oldest brother of four boys. Fear is extremely useful. I, I, I secretly wanted, I didn't want my brothers to be mortally afraid of me, like I was going to literally physically kill them. That's, that was never my desire. But I did, deep down inside, I did want my younger brothers uh, to be a little bit afraid of me. That can be advantageous. If it, I wanted my brothers to at least have a, a little bit of a doubt in their minds that Jason probably could whoop me if he really wanted to. That's very useful. Fear is very useful. And that's, that's kind of what, that's the position I, I, I wanted to be in. So none of you are really afraid of me very much. But what if I told you this? What if I told you that I knew the most powerful and the most dangerous gangster in L.A.? And I'm here to inform you that this man, this big, mean guy, he's killed people. He's the most powerful, meanest gangster in L.A. is after you. Would you be afraid? Just a little bit? Would you take some precautions? You know, maybe you'd take your, maybe you'd take your name out of the phone book. You'd get an unlisted number. You know, maybe I'd tell you, and, and by the way, this guy knows your name and he knows where you live. What would you do? You'd, you'd probably be con at least a little bit concerned. You'd probably, first you'd probably say, what did I ever do to this guy? I didn't do anything to this guy. Why is he after me? I don't know. He just is. Oh, and by the way, you say, well, L.A.'s a long ways from, you know, Indiana or Missouri. Why do I have to worry about this guy? By the way, he has operatives all over the country. This, this guy, he, he controls a network of organized crime all the way across the country. He's got operatives in Joplin. He's got operatives in, in Indiana. You can't get away from this guy. 
He knows who you are. He knows where you live. He's got people working for him. And he's after you. He can ruin your life. He could even kill you if he wanted to. Would you be a little bit concerned about that? Well, I'm here to tell you that you have an enemy that is extremely powerful. He's dangerous. He hates you. He hates you because you remind him of God. You're made in the image of God. Every time Satan looks at you, he thinks about God and he hates God. He's the enemy of God. That's why he's your enemy. He's powerful. He, he's in authority. He's got a, Satan's got an organized network all over this world. He rules a kingdom of darkness. That's what the scripture says. He's the prince of darkness. And he's after you. He's after you because you're a believer in Christ. Especially because you're a believer in Christ. He's your adversary. He's your enemy. That's what I'm here to tell you this morning. It's so important that we remember who we are in Jesus Christ. In light of, in light of everything that's against us, in light of all the opposition, especially the opposition from the ultimate enemy, the devil. It's so important that we remember who we are and what we have in Jesus Christ. That's why we're here at the renewal. That's why we gather together as Christians and we, and we encourage one another and we, we preach to one another and we teach one another so that we, we remember who we are and what we have in Jesus Christ because of this enemy, because we have this adversary, because we're in a war. And God's intention for us in this war is for us to... Be more than conquerors. That's what it says. That's what Paul said in Romans 8. He says, you're, you're more than a conqueror through him who loves you. That's Jesus. Let me tell you a little about Jesus. I don't want to give the devil the spotlight here. I'm going to talk about the devil in this message, but I don't want to give him uh, first, first billing. Amen. Let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. He's the second person of the Godhead, the Trinity. He left heaven, he put on a human body, he humbled himself, he came down into the earthly lower regions, he was born in weakness as a baby in a manger. In so doing, Jesus actually inserted himself into enemy territory. He came into a region, he came into a realm that was controlled by the devil. This is the devil's territory, do you know that? Now God is overall. God is on his throne. God is sovereign. But Satan is called, did you know this? Satan is called the God, small g, of this world. That's one of his titles. He's called the prince of the power of the air. This is his territory. This is his region. This is his kingdom for a time. It's not going to last forever. So what God did is one of the members of the Godhead came into the devil's territory and went and Jesus came into this world when he came into it he wasn't omniscient he wasn't omnipresent he wasn't omnipotent he humbled himself and here's what Jesus did he utterly and completely and in every way possible defeated the devil Amen. as a human being Amen. in Satan's territory Having humbled himself, he utterly and completely overcame the devil in every possible way. Jesus conquered. He did. And he wants you to conquer. Here's what it says in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 4, I wish we could have a, re a renewal on the book of Revelation. That would be stupendous. Revelation chapter 4, we see God on his throne. And in chapter 5, John sees a lamb looking as if it had been slain in the midst of the throne. And John saw a book in the hand of the one seated on the throne. It was sealed with seven seals. And a voice went out and says, Who is worthy to open the scroll, to break the seals? This scroll like represents uh, control or God's purpose in the earth. Or Some scholars say the, the title deed to the earth. Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? It says nobody was worthy. And John, so John says he wept. And then one of the elders said, Don't weep. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has what? 
prevailed or conquered. It's the word conquered. He's overcome and he's worthy.